the spirit in the church this morning. The power of God is here. And whatever you need when the power is here and making itself manifest, all you got to do is claim that victory. No matter what it is, no matter what you are going through, no matter what you went through last week, claim your victory right today. God is here and he dwells in the midst of the faithful. And hallelujah, we are faithful. That's why we're here this morning. And we thank God eternally for bringing us out of darkness into this marvelous light. We thank him for the divine revelation of who he is. And we give honor always to that God who revealed name to the New Testament church is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the God of both testaments and the Lord of glory. We recognize him and we serve him and worship him and him alone. Beside him, there is none else. I want to also uh, explain to the church the awesome responsibility he has placed on our shoulder, not only to defend the faith once delivered, but to make a way out of no way for the church. Now, we spent quite a lot of money on auto repair this month. Uh, today, I have to give the uh, technician $350 for the repair of a furnace. I asked the man what was wrong. He said, well, the thermostat would burn out. $350. What can you do? So we yet have a means to pay what they say we owe. And if there's any unbalance, God will straighten that out later on. So we don't worry about those things that we can't control. We worry about the things that we can control and that our servitude unto God by being faithful and sincere in our worship. So uh, now I have an important message I feel I want to bring this morning. Uh, but before I want to hear from the bells singing, uh, some places I can't go. There are some things I may not know. There are some places that I cannot go. But I am sure of this one thing. Oh, yes, I know God is real, for I can feel Him deep within. Yes, God is real. He's real in my soul. Yes, God is real, for He has washed and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. Yes, God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. Yes, God is real. Because I can feel it. Way down deep in my soul. Right. Need to see the church. Man. God is a spirit. And they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. That means when you're going through difficult times, you still have to praise God and thank God. Thank you, Lord. You can't do it in the natural, but you can do it in the spirit. And since the spirit of a saved person dominates the natural you, you look past all the trials and tribulations, all the difficult times and all the burdens, and you get happy in the Spirit of God. I'm happy because of a promise he made that if I carry my cross, get me Matthew 16, if I carry my cross, 
God will never fail me. Amen. Now again, the cross has been reflected on from time to time, but I think the best identification would be that song, Old Rugged Cross. Right. On a hill far away stood a what? An old rugged cross, the right. emblem of suffering. Some say shame and some say pain, right. but it's one and the same. Right. But the writer says, one day I'll exchange that cross for a crown. Now you know, the only people who wear a crown is the king. They don't give it to the nobleman or the duke or the prime minister. Secretary of State, they give the crown to a king, a king, singular. When you go to glory, you won't get a crown. That's your crown. Nobody else is crowned because it signifies royalty, a kingship that God promised to give each and every one who would serve him. But it's difficult in these dispensations of time because of all the false religious uh, teachings that are going forward even as I speak today. You've got churches upon churches that are packed out today teaching a lie. 20, some, some have they claim 25,000 members teaching a lie. But one thing is for certain, the only way a change can come to a people, it has to come through a word. But if the word does not change you, how can you be changed? And if you're changed, you're still doing the same thing you used to do, you're not changed. So thank God for the true church. Because here we teach change. And the change comes by an obedient spirit. Do what thus saith the Lord. Had to put someone out again yesterday. Come to the mission with a Baptist pastor. Can you believe that? <laughs> you ain't hold this. But you gonna go to a Baptist pastor for some kind of counseling, some kind of encouragement. Well, why didn't you go to the Baptist pastor and tell him to take you in when you didn't have no place to stay? If you think of how stupid the world is, <laughs> It automatically makes you think you're a genius. Right. Oh, right. Hallelujah. Right. You don't never cut off the hand that feeds you. Right. Even if you ain't right. Some things, uh, uh, some things through common sense, you cover. Right. If I got a Pentecostal church taking care of me, I sure ain't gonna let know I'm going to a Baptist church. Right. Now you're a double fool. Now, obviously, if the Baptist church could have took care of you, you'd have been there a long time ago. But since he wasn't, why you keep running back to him? Well, they want to baptize in Jesus' name. He's going to argue with, a Baptist pastor can't argue with no saint of God. And I want to say this. When you're witnessing and you have discussion with a false preacher, now understand how they got to be where they're at. Through a dominant, persuasive personality. Now, if you can't match their persona, then the best thing you can do is leave them alone. All right. All right. But if you can have them, go toe to toe. All right. I'm talking with the word. The apostle taught when the first church was established a legal authority. He said you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Yep. Didn't say Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And if you search the scripture, there's nowhere in the Bible where the apostles ever baptized Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. No way. Amen. They didn't disobey Jesus' commandment in Matthew 28, 19. All right. They obeyed it. You right. say, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Right. So they did that when they baptized in Jesus' name. Right. 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 Father in creation, Son of redemption, Holy Ghost in the church. Right. Right. Not titles, but we baptize in the name yeah. of the titles. Right. You can't make a document legal by giving a title. You got to give the name. I think it's brought out the other night. 
Go to the bank all you want. I got $500 in the bank. I want $5. They ain't going to give you a nickel if you don't sign your name. But my name is Father. Fine. I, I hope you got a whole lot of kids. But what's your name? My name is Father. I'll give him to the call the police. They'll either take you to jail or to the insane asylum. One or the other. Either you crazy or you ignorant. Something's wrong somewhere. Jesus made the New Testament church covenant legal. And you have to be baptized in the legal name. And that is Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. That saving name is still Jesus. But you can call it Yeshua if you want to. It says we speak English. Ain't nothing wrong with saying Jesus. Hallelujah. So I'm saying, brothers and sisters, you can't make a fool intelligent Amen. unless he wants to be intelligent. Amen. But if he wants to be intelligent, he does not want to be a fool. Amen. So I don't understand people to this day and they will never understand people. I recall a man in prison wrote me for about three years. Got out of prison and said, I'm going to come and be with you. Stay with me about five or six years. Come to find out, I raised him up the elder. Yes. He don't call no names. Come to find out he was going with another elder's wife sure in the church. Yeah. Oh, glory, hallelujah. When it came to me, I denied it. I said, oh, it can't be true. And you don't tell me that. Ain't nobody going to set up under my teaching you know, through three, four years. And, 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 and what? Go with another minister's wife? That's absurd. They had on the person, develop cancer, travel all the way from Michigan, come down here and get me pray for him. I pray the prayer of faith. Now, but it's up to God to do the healing. Right. Yeah. And when God looks back at a past record and sees that that record is still identifiable with that same character today, Man. will he move? I doubt it seriously, but I'm gonna leave that in the hands of God. Man. One thing I say, the Bible says, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. If you repent before God, that means you don't go back to do the same thing you used to do. I used to gamble. Loved it. I mean, loved it. I get a phone call at 2 o'clock in the morning. They gamble over on Brook Street. Here I go. I mean, go. Get broke and sit there and watch them cards flip. Hallelujah. I want to see who's going to win this hand. Mm, and I'm just pulling and I'm broke. Ain't got no money. Divorce from money. Praise right, God. <laughs> but that thing had me. And it took the power of prayer to break that deal. And you, you talk about drugs. Man, drugs ain't nothing compared to gambling. Amen. Amen. You talk about an addiction. Yes. But if God can deliver you from whatever habit that is contrary to his teachings, God will do, do just that. For one thing for certain, you got to want to. Now, I hate to share this this morning, but y'all remember Brother Moo? I got a message yesterday. Brother Moo died of an overdose. 32 years old, I believe. 31, 32. Died of an overdose. Come here and was doing great. But he let the devil trick him out to church. And Brother Moo had a good heart. I see somebody with a good heart go to hell. But sometimes you've got to make a conscious decision for your soul rather than anything else. Put everything out of your life but God. And serve God all you know how. And God will do the rest of the battle for you. But you got to have some, listen, you got to have some backbone. You, you can't let a situation come up in your life and call you to run away and leave the church. Where you going to go to? Oh, it, it, no matter how you duck and dodge, sooner or later, right. life is going to catch up with you. Amen. And if you ain't got no protection from the blood, 32 years old and gone into eternity. Hell's fire forever. Because you left the church. Now, that sentinel, it spread so much. Yeah. Yeah. And you mean to tell me the government can't stop it? 
brothers and sisters, don't be a fool. The government can stop that sentinel tomorrow if they truly want to. But there's so much money involved. And they're not after your life. Why do you think they're putting these stations up in these cities that I reflected on not too long ago? You got a, uh, you spray them overdose here, pull 11, get a pill. Listen, if a person wants to commit suicide, you can't watch them 24 7. Sometimes you guys say, well, look, you won't commit suicide. The best I can do is pray for you. But I'm not going to sit here and watch you and take the gun out your hand. Every time you get, oh, I'm thinking about you, you take the gun out there. Are you serious? If you want to blow your brains out, look, I'll pray for you, but you go ahead on. Because I got other things to do. Hallelujah. Anytime a person keeps using drugs and you know it's destructive, because the government tells you it's destructive. Cocaine in the White House. Fingerprints. Is it, oh, we don't know what the fingerprints are. President's son. The man that crack head and he'll die crack head. Unless he, he, unless he received the gospel, and he, I doubt if he will. Of course, I, well, I can't say. But I, from what I know by his past record, he ain't going to receive the gospel. Because his daddy won't. And I know his daddy won't because he got more homosexuals in his cabinet than any president in past history put together. Yes. So I'm saying, you cover, and they're supposed to have all kinds of devices in the White House when you're going except a certain... And then you're supposed to have some kind of detector yes. that registers if you got some some a gun or yes. drugs or something, it'll reflect. Yes. They don't know what happened to those machines and the dogs supposed to be there sniffing all that. They don't have none of that. Why? The president's son does what he wanna do. And who won't stop him? Ain't nobody stopped him yet. Nope. They got all kind of evidence. And they even go as high as the justice of the justice, the head of the justice department. Yeah. He blocks investigations. Sure so no, no, you, you can't go that far. You have to stop it right here. But me and you have been in prison. Yeah. But there is always an excuse for someone who follows the devil because we're in a dispensation of time where God is allowing the devil to have his free way. And don't you think for a moment God couldn't intervene and stop it right now. But he's not going to do it. Why? Because he's trying to prove true worship. True servitude. Do you love me? Yes. Will you follow my commandments and keep them? Yes. Well, we'll let's, let's, let's wait and see. Go. So if you leave the church, where does that say go? It says St. Matthew chapter 16. Pick me up in verse 24. If you love God, you're going to carry your responsibility to the end of your journey. Read. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Now he's teaching his disciples or followers. If any man come after me, or if any man will follow me, uh-huh. Let him deny himself. Deny his own personal joy, his own personal comfort. You can't take certain money because I got a, a plan for my comfort later on. This is my retirement. Your retirement is supposed to be in heaven. Not down here. Hallelujah. Ain't no silver and gold going to make it to glory. Read that again. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Deny himself. And take up his cross. What? Take up his cross. Well, I thought Jesus paid the price at the cross at Calvary. But Jesus said, If a man follow me, let him pick up is his cross. Yes, his. That's a personal pronoun, isn't it? Yes. So I got a cross, you got a cross, everybody got a cross. If you want to be Jesus' disciple, he said, pick up your cross or your suffering, your shame, 
your humiliation, your burden of responsibility, and then follow me. You can't follow God if you're not willing to sacrifice for God. Give me a Jeremiah 23rd chapter, verse 1 and 2. Anytime you follow false leadership, there's something in you that wants to follow a false leader. And that is because maybe you don't want to wear a head cover, sister. Maybe you don't want to wear a dress, sister, at a proper length. Maybe you don't want to uh, go without your lipstick and your makeup that makes you look so pretty. Yeah. Amen. It don't make you look pretty. Amen. I learned a long time ago, and right today, I look at a woman with lipstick on and, and makeup, and she looks hideous, Amen. filthy. Yeah. Watch her watch her on TV, and they got lipstick on, and look so what man looks nasty. Right. Yeah, you got red lips. Yeah. You, you, ain't, you ain't born with red lips, but you got red lips. And, Man, it just looks hideous. Maybe it's because I'm saved. All right, brother. Amen, amen. So, but read, daughter. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 1 and 2. Read. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep and of that's my where pastors. I want to go. Woe be to the Baptist preachers, <laughs> Presbyterian, amen. all you hypocrite, Church of God in Christ. Right. That what? That scatter the sheep of my pastors. Divide my church. Spread them abroad. Yes. Well, I can't reach them. Read. Saith the Lord, thus, therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and have driven them away. You divided my church and driven them away. Uh huh. And have not visited them. Wait. You haven't taught them. You right. say you're a pastor, but how you're a pastor for God and you're not teaching them what thus saith the Lord. Amen. We today have got to understand there are many churches out there, but there's only one true church, and you've got to get yourself anchored in this true church, and don't let no wind of doctrine come and spread you away or take you away or cause you to have a negative thought against your church. Don't have nobody put a negative thought in your mind. What's wrong with you? I don't care if it's wife to the husband or husband to the wife. You don't let nobody put a negative thought in your mind. How is it cause you to waste the church of God and your responsibility is the calling of Christ. He taught his disciples. Followers. I got to teach you so when I'm gone, you can teach others. I'm trying to put something in you. There's a wind of doctrine going around that will take you out of here if you don't hold steadfast to what thus saith the Lord. There's no divided church. There's one church. There's no Presbyterian, Baptist, Seventh-day Adventist, all and all and all. They don't have none of that. Jesus said you speak the same thing. That there be no division amongst you. Speak the same. I don't care where you're at. Speak the same thing. But you can't speak the same thing if you ain't following one God. And if you're following one God, there got to be one leader to the church. You say, well, there were more than one disciple. Yes, there were, but they had different parts of the vineyard. Right. Yeah. And did not Paul make a, a, a statement, I can't go to that part of the vineyard right. where Peter is? Yes. Amen. That's his part? Yep. Words to that effect. Yes. I can't go there because, and I cannot uh, encroach on another man's, or build up on another man's foundation. Yes. Yes. So each part of the vineyard, God got a leader. Yes. So that the church is not split and divided. That's why he has that. Yeah. But he also has a way for you to carry your own cross, your own responsibility, and can't nobody carry your cross for you but you. Yeah. You got to learn how to discipline your life. Things may not be going right, but you got to discipline your life. Yeah. Things you might say, well, look, I've got enough sense to know that, no, you ain't got enough sense to know nothing. All right, well, but yeah. Jesus Christ, yeah. what did Paul say? I don't know nothing but what? Jesus Christ. Yeah. And he was taught on the scholar. He said the feet of Gamaliel, yes. a scholar. All right. But he said, I don't want to know nothing but Jesus Christ. That's right. yes. And left everything to pick up his cross. Yes. I believe what he said, I've been beaten and persecuted more than any of the apostles. Yes. But I still held on. Right. And I like that part. We said, I fought a good fight. All right. yes. I kept the faith. Amen. Brother says, you don't reflect on that enough. I fought a good fight and I kept the faith. In other words, I wrestled all this life's journey and I still held on. Amen. Not down, hallelujah. Stop doing and kick, but I still held on. Yes. I still believe in Jesus. Well, you mean Jesus let you go through all this? Yes. Right. Yes. 
And you still gonna praise me? Yes, I'm still gonna praise you. Amen. You still gonna come to church happy? I'm making you burden, but I'm gonna get happy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm gonna sing myself happy. I'm gonna just get testimony and get happy. How do anybody in time? Somebody tell me about Jesus. I'm gonna start getting happy. But you got all this you going through, I don't care. I'm still happy in the promise of God. So I got another hope. I got a greater reward. I ain't got a dime. I don't want no money. Preacher, if I got something, I'm gonna bring it to you. Because first of all, I trust in you. Yes. And I know what you're going to do it. Do with it. That's right. Oh. That's why you got to know your leader. Hallelujah. I guarantee you that man that got pulled out the church yesterday by that Baptist pastor. He don't know nothing about that Baptist pastor. Hallelujah. But I can tell you something about him. Right. I bet he drank liquor. Hallelujah. If he don't, it's because he don't want to. Yeah. I bet he got two or three wives. Uh -huh. right. If he ain't because he can't. Hallelujah. I bet you got a brand new car. That's right. Yeah. I bet you on that. Yeah. And I bet you his wife ain't gonna wear the same dress twice in the road in church. Right. Now I bet on that. I bet my salvation on that. Right. She don't wear the same dress two times in a row. Right. Right. I wish you'd go there and check it out. Uh, but no, don't, don't, don't do that. That would do that. Church, we got a responsibility to the cross of Christ. We got a responsibility to follow after God. Yes. Jesus said, if you be my disciple, pick up your cross. Your cross. Not your brother's cross, not your sister's cross. Not your wife's or your husband's. Your cross. Amen. And then what? Follow after me. How? Through the word of God. Yes. Prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake it. They were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen. This Bible is written by the authority of God through the holy prophets that God set to teach us the right way. Amen. All we got to do is believe it. And don't let nobody come and plant a seed of doubt. Amen. That's why that young man got tricked out of salvation just as sure as I'm here. Had he left that Baptist preacher alone, he never would have got tricked. Amen. See, sometimes you, can, sometimes you can't go. Something you can't do. Right. You can't go. What the song say? Someplace I can't go. All right. Some things you can't do when you're saved. And one of the things you do keep fooling around with these hypocrite preachers out there because they'll trick you. Yeah. How do I know? Look at their congregations. Uh -huh. And some of them people got degrees. Yeah. And I ain't talking no bachelor's degree. All right. Master's and doctor of uh -huh. psychology and doctor of this and doctor of that. Oh. <laughs> Elder Master Taylor preaching at a church one time and uh, <laughs> he Pastor, uh, he called the pastor, pastor. He said, oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm Dr. So-and-so. And so, and so he's, he's, he, he let it slip. He said, well, what, what, what doctor are, are you? He, 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 started, he looked at his wife and said, honey, honey, what, what doctor am I? <laughs> Listen, they class run on the title, doctor of this, doctor of theology, doctor of physiology, and doctor of this. They ain't no more of a doctor than a doctor is. Like but what I'm trying to tell you, they'll trick you if you listen to them and keep fooling around with them. We today have got to understand it's one way to heaven. And if God will allow you the privilege to be a part of his sanctified church, you got to do it. Leave away from false influence. I want to close again with that sister who was in the church raised up in Pentecost. And when she was in her late 20s, she met a man, fast talker, in the world. They opened up speakeasy after I was joined, they used to call it. Selling bootleg liquor and all that. One day a sister came to pray for somebody in the hospital. A number of days back in the 40s, they had wards, put maybe 150, 200 people in a ward. And she happened to see that sister and recognized her. Sister, you here? And uh, you very sick? She said, well, I'm dying of cancer. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to tell Bishop Johnson, he's going to come and pray for you. She said, no, no, don't tell him, don't tell him nothing. Oh, yeah, I'm going to tell him. Went and told Bishop Johnson. And a week later, Bishop Johnson came, saw the sister. He said, sister, I'm going to pray for you. She said, no, don't pray for me. He said, prayer ain't going to hurt nothing. Right. Do not pray for me. All the time I left the church, a voice was speaking to me, go back home. Daughter, go back home. Yeah. For years I heard the voice, and then one day I didn't hear the voice. Mm. Now I'm here dying of cancer. 
It's too late for me, Bishop. Don't pray for me. And turn her back on the bishop who faced the wall. A few weeks later, we're dead and gone to eternity. I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters, the day you hear the voice of God, don't take advantage and say, well, I know that you, I'll catch up later on. There may not be no later on. There may not be no after a while. Get it right now. When you got it right now, lock it up. Hallelujah. Fight for it. Don't let nobody come and change you. Don't let nobody come and take your anointing. Hallelujah. You get up to speak. What happened? Your anointing's gone. You give it away. You let the devil see me. Lord, don't let me fail. I want to be your friend. When my way is done, hold me by your side. When my way is done, if that's right. Holy, holy woman. Amen. I thank God Amen. for what Prophet had preached all week. Amen. I'm still uh, meditating on Wednesday. I have my notes and I went back to a read on third shift. Amen. Yes. Thank Amen. the Lord. I worked 20 hours, but Lord, I thank God for the breakthrough. I was Amen. like, I'm a praise. I'm so I'm a little sleepy. I said, loose here, enemy. You getting off me. I'm a praise. I'm thank God. Oh, when you're sleepy, sometimes you gotta move around. But I said, oh, I'm awake, yeah, Lord. Right. I'm prophet to preach. I'm still yeah. up. But I thank God for the word. Prophet saying, we gotta continue to carry our cross. Amen. Yes. And I was meditating that we have to hold on to the traditions what Prophet has taught us. Amen. Yeah. We have to continue to hold on to the word of God. Amen. And you now he said we. We gotta, we can't let the enemy come. And uh, thinking about how the man, uh, Elder I said, knocked on our door. I'm like, what? knocking on our door. But it's sad because he had a door. He had a door to come in and a man. door to go to sleep. And what are you begging for now? And it's sad that people come in and they play. And it, like Prophet said, the preacher, and you go into, it's like he always say you go to McDonald's and you can't go to Burger King. This man had gone to the Baptist church and you live in the Holiness church. But it's sad because. They don't have a cross to carry, amen, because they don't know the cross. They want the world. They want what the world is. Like Prophet said, the, the Baptist preacher, he's drinking. So what do you think he's doing? Amen. Well, after church, you'll be all right. Take a drink. Just come on over. And that church they put up for you, you know, they're good. Sleep there. But come on, I'll give you a little something. And like Prophet said, calm you down, your nerves. <laughs> but I thank God for the truth, amen. Thank God. We got to pick up our responsibility, amen, and continue to... Hold on to the word, amen. And the church, he's prophet saying, it can't be divided, amen. There's, yeah. But there's preachers every day. And I thank God for our prophet, amen. Because, whew, you see, I thank God I, I don't look at the TV and ministries and all that. I, I don't have time for it. You know, I got enough time just for prophet and his <laughs> YouTube. Well, I mean, I know y'all do it for teaching, but, you know, I, I ain't got time because, like, prophet, it'll make you bad looking. <laughs> Looking like clowns, you know. Amen. But I thank God for Wednesday night Bible study because Prophet, I was thinking about, I wrote a note. He, he uh, rebuked the um, preacher, the bald head preacher, and I, I was, yeah. I was wrote my notes. Bald head preacher, grow you some hair before you amen. try to come against, you know, Prophet, amen. All these preachers want to be bald headed and want to try to teach Prophet, grow some hair and then come talk to Prophet, amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Down, but speak the same thing. Prophet said, yeah, one leader, we got to follow that one leader. Amen. Right. So I thank God for the word on this morning and pray my strength. The Lord is going to be this mess. Amen. May the Lord watch, May the Lord watch. between me and thee Amen. while we're absent, Amen. one from another, one from another. in Jesus' name. Jesus.